Hey everyone, welcome to Sean Allen Films The Educational Series. I'm Sean Allen. This is part two of a three-part series on the integumentary system. In last week's episode, we talked about the skin. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out right now. But if you have seen it, let's move on and discuss about hair. Hair is everywhere. On your head, your arms, your legs, your chest, your back, your... Okay, thank you, Professor Word. Yes, it is true. Hair can grow all over our bodies. Some can grow at a faster rate than others. And believe it or not, hair can also come in many different colors, like brown, red, blonde, black, or even gray. Oh! A single piece of hair can be divided into two parts, the shaft and the root. The shaft happens to be the part of the hair that is exposed outside of the skin. The root, on the other hand, is buried deep within the skin. Whoa! What is this? Well, this happens to be another microscopic image of skin. Only this time, we can see the hair growing. What we are looking at are the hair roots. And as you can tell, they are nowhere near the surface of the skin. The shaft and root are made up of three different sections. The medulla, the cortex, and the cuticle. Did you know that a single artery and vein runs through the hair root? Well, it does. At the bottom of the hair root is a section called the hair bulb. The inside of the hair bulb is called the matrix. At the bottom of the hair bulb is a round section called the dermal papilla. Inside this section is an artery and a vein. Why is that? It's because the hair needs to grow and get oxygen and nutrients from the blood. The whole outside of the hair bulb contains three different layers. They are the interior epithelial root sheath, external epithelial root sheath, stratum basal, and the dermal root sheath. These are all contained in the hair follicle and help in the process of hair growth. How long does it take for hair to grow? Well, it depends on where it is located on your body and also on your age. In about a month, all the hair on your body would have grown to at least half of an inch. When a hair is growing, it is in a state known as a growth state. When a hair is not growing, it is in a state called a rest state. As we age, your hair may die or cease to grow altogether. Thus, we may get baldness. We must remember that people who go through treatments of chemotherapy tend to lose their hair right away. There are chemicals in this therapy that kill off the hair follicles, but only temporarily. The good news is that the hair follicles will return, uh, but it will take some time to grow. There is a part of the hair that we need to discuss is this brown cluster around the hair root. It's called the sebaceous gland. What does this do? I'll tell you. This creates an oily substance called sebum that helps keep the skin waterproof. As we mentioned in the last episode, there is a muscle attached to the hair root. It's called the erector fili. What exactly does this do? Let's use an example. It's a cold, snowy day. You're outside and need to get to some place nice and warm. The nerves in your skin send a message to your brain saying that it's cold and you need to get warmed up. The brain then sends a signal to the blood vessels in the skin to become narrow. As this happens, the muscle reacts to this, causing the hair to stand straight up. In doing this, it causes the skin around it to pull inward. Thus, you get goosebumps. If you want to learn more about how the body cools itself off, be sure to check out part one of the integumentary system. Well, we're about finished with part two of this series, so let's go over a quick review. Hair is divided into two sections. They are the shaft and the root. The shaft is exposed to the outside, while the root is not. Hair has three layers the medulla, the cortex, and the cuticle. The bottom portion of the hair root is known as the hair bulb. The interior of the bulb is known as the matrix. The sebaceous gland helps produce sebum to keep the skin waterproof. 
And finally, the arendar pili is the muscle that contracts the hair to help you stay warm. Well, everybody, we are finished with part two of the integumentary system. Next week, we will be discussing about nails. Before you go, be sure to like this video and leave a comment telling us what you thought about today's show. Be sure to also check out Sean's Google Plus page. The link is down below. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, keep on learning.